Absolutely. Welcome, guys. We are so excited to finally be able to present this property to you. Phoenix Place is 144 units in Atlanta, Georgia, more specifically a small town named East Point. And we are all super excited about it. We all have our own skin in the game. We're all investing um, and we're going to be telling you all about it. Just a few little ground rules here first, uh, as we mentioned already. If you have questions, post them in the little chat box and we will have a few opportunities opportunities throughout the presentation to address them. And then, of course, a whole Q&A session at the end. Um, so we'll be able to get to those. Then going on to the next page, um, this is the, the fun stuff that uh, I'm not going to read all of it, but I recommend <laughs> that you take the time to download the OM and read it, the legal disclaimers. As we all know, any investment can carry risks. Uh, so as we go through the presentation, we'll be covering all of the underlying risks with this deal and how we plan to mitigate any risks. So um, like I said, take a moment to read that on your own time. Now we'll just jump right into the fun stuff instead and uh, let's meet the team. So our teammates here are incredible. We come from a very diverse background, which is wonderful because we add, we all add different types of experience and knowledge. Um, between us all, we have about 50 years of experience in the real estate industry in various capacities. Um, and we have over $350 million under management between us all. So lots of great knowledge here. I'm going to pass it off to our team leader, Lee and Megan Fjord, to introduce themselves first, and then we'll go through quickly with each uh, of the other team members. Thanks, Megan. Um, my name is Lee Fjord. I have over a decade of experience in the real estate industry, starting out as uh, a lowly property manager, and then graduated to commercial real estate brokerage after many hard years of work in the industry. Now I am a full-time multifamily real estate investor partner with my beautiful wife, Megan. Yes. Yes, I'm Megan, and uh, I served for nine years on active duty in the U.S. Navy. After that, I transitioned out in 2016, got my real estate license and started working in the residential real estate world. I started investing and met Lee in 2020, and we've been investing together ever since doing multifamily syndications just like this. Thank you so much for being here tonight. On to Joe. Thanks, Megan. My name is Joe Johnson. My wife, Sharetta, and I have been investing in the real estate industry since 1996. After playing uh, 10 years in the National Football League, both with the New Orleans Saints and the Green Bay Packers, I've invested both on the residential side and the commercial side, mainly focusing on residential. So happy to be back on the commercial side and looking forward to being part of this deal. My team will serve as the boots on the ground, overseeing the CapEx improvement budget, making sure things get done as they're supposed to. Um, my team is currently managing fix and flip properties in five markets, and we pride ourselves in quality finished products. With that being said, we will focus on making sure our CapEx and improvement budget maintains integrity, transparency, all deadlines are met, and a strong emphasis on making sure each and every tenant is proud and happy to call the Phoenix Place home. And at this time, I'll be passing it on to Mr. Charlie Peters. Hey guys, Charlie Peters. I am the uh, key principal and lead sponsor on the team. Uh, bought my first multifamily property in 1996. Uh, so I have been an owner, operator, investor, landlord for 27 years now. Uh, this will be my 30th uh, multifamily apartment acquisition. Uh, super excited about this one, and you guys are about to hear more as to why I'm super excited about this one. So uh, with that, I'll introduce you to Megan and Morgan Gonzalez. Morgan Gonzalez here. In the picture, you'll see my sister, Megan, and the uh, one person that's missing from our group is my wife, Bethany, but she is involved, and I know she's spoken to quite a few of the investors here online as well. Uh, we are MG Investment Ventures together here, and uh, I can tell you a little bit of our background. Mine in particular, I have a degree in advertising with a background in marketing. Uh, you'll see on there listed as the, uh, we're listed as the marketing managers and lead investor relations. Um, so 
uh, you know, we went through there into the real estate market. I've been in the, we have a luxury residential company. We specialize in luxury homes and unique properties. We've been blessed and very fortunate to have an amazing client base that's taken us around the globe with our residential business. A lot of fun. We get to work with some of the most sexy and beautiful properties there are on the planet. Uh, beyond that, we have a big diverse background in another part of this commercial field here in manufactured homes, mobile homes, modular, commercial modular, both on the dealership side for buy and sell, development side, and also on the consulting of buy and sell of RV and manufactured home parks around the country. Uh, with all that being said, it's obvious to say that I live, breathe, sleep, real estate, absolutely love it. And our absolute favorite uh, realm to invest in in real estate is right here with multifamily. And I'm telling you, this is the A team. We have an amazing team on board here. And we are so looking forward to all of you joining us and investing alongside of us right here with this Atlanta project. And from here, uh, you know, keep going on together afterwards. Colby and Dave, are you guys out there? Yes. Thank you, Morgan. Uh, my name is Colby Carlson. Uh, as you can tell, the reoccurring theme here with everybody is that we have a deep love for real estate. I found my love for real estate shortly after graduating college uh, a little over three years ago. And since then have been taken under Lee's wing and it kind of has been his uh, right hand man for about two years now. Had the pleasure of working with many of these people on this team. Uh, we're very excited about this property. I'm here with my dad, Dave Carlson. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hi, guys. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, I'm Dave Carlson. Um, my, my part in this is construction manager. I've been in the construction business for well over 40 years, doing multifamily ground up, and I've done quite a few renos and lots, lots of commercial site development, that, that type of work. So I'll be working hand-in-hand -hand with uh, Joe, and it's, uh, I, I, I would have to admit, I've never had the NFL on my team, but this is going to be amazing. I can't wait. <laughs> um, and get to work with my son. So it's quite the amazing team we've got here. Plus, this is my second property we're going to bat with uh, Lee on. So looking forward to this. Sam, take it away. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Sam Passanisi, and I get to work with my son, Samuel Passanisi, also. Uh, thank you for joining us on this Phoenix Place Apartment webinar. We're, we are very excited to present this to you. Uh, Samuel, my son, has taken on the role of underwriting due diligence and asset management, uh, helping Lee and the team out while I am a co-sponsor on the deal. I've been in the construction business for over 38 years, and, and currently I'm an executive for a contracting company in San Diego. I enjoy it. I've been in the construction business a long time and, and uh, enjoy the, the, uh, the industry. This will be my 14th limited partnership deal as an investor. So I'm looking forward to it. I've got skin in the game and uh, all of our general partners do. And I'm gonna turn this back over to Lee. Thanks team. So now that you've had an opportunity to get to know the team as a, individuals, I want you to tell you about what we are as a team combined and what our mission is. Uh, when we take this very, very, very seriously, our mission, is to create value with every for everyone we work with. We purchase poorly managed, underperforming apartment complexes and implement professional business business practices to improve the living conditions in our communities and increase the quality of service provided to our residents. By transforming our apartment complexes into safe, high quality homes, we drastically increase the value of our properties, providing substantial cash flowing investment opportunities for you, our partners. Back to Morgan. Okay, so right here, you guys get to see an aerial photograph of the property. This is Phoenix Place, 144 units, as we discussed, sitting on nearly 10 acres. So you'll see that there is a lot of beautiful, open, grassy areas. And as we go into some more details later, you'll find about how we're gonna privatize these townhome style apartment complexes and just really improve it. I'm gonna throw something a, a little different in here though. You know the old adage in real estate, they always say to buy the ugliest home on the best street. Well, this is sort of one of those situations. 
Uh, I'm not going to call this property the ugly home, but it is setting in a neighborhood of multi-million dollar homes surrounded in every direction. There's a ton of charm and it's beautiful. So right now with the way the current owners have been taking care of this property, it sort of is the ugly duckling of the neighborhood. So I can't wait for you guys to see what we are planning to do to improve on, upon this. It's going to be stunning when we're done. On the left of this screen, you're gonna see the QR code. I've spoken to a number of you, number of you personally before we got on the webinar, and I know some of you are already uh, ready to commit and to invest. So if you wanna do that now and bypass going through the webinar, by all means, go for it. Go ahead and scan that QR code. It's gonna take you directly into the cash flow portal, which is our investor portal, and it's gonna walk you through the steps there. It's pretty simple. Um, and uh, if you're not quite ready, no problem. They're gonna, the QR code will be up a couple times throughout this and of course at the end as well, so we can always get you on board later. Awesome, guys. If you guys are having any trouble with that QR code, I will be dropping the link directly to the cash flow portal here shortly, uh, and you'll be able to access it that way. But let's dive into the property. We're going to start off at about a 30,000 foot overview, and we're going to narrow in deeper and deeper into the details. Uh, so we are doing a C to B class value add strategy with this property. And again, this is a 506 C syndication, which means it's for accredited investors only. Okay. Uh, this will be a 70-30 split. 70% uh, goes to the LPs, 30% goes to the GPs. Now, we are having a fantastic CapEx budget for this project. We're going to put $2,250,000 2, into this property. It's really going to turn it around. We are picking up this property for $103,000 a unit, which is $14,875,000. Uh, I can tell you that this is a very good basis for this part of Atlanta. Uh, we were seeing properties that have sold recently in the past couple of months for over 120000 a unit. We'll hear a little bit more about that later on. Uh, you will see a 2.05 to 2.25 equity multiple on this property. And now what that means is that for every dollar that you put into this property, you are going to be getting $2.05 or $2.25 out of this property, okay? We are putting low fixed low cost uh, agency debt on this property. And we do plan on holding this property for about five years. We are seeking $7.4 million to achieve and get this property done, this project done. And with that, you'll see about an average annual return of 21 to 25%. Uh, later on, we're gonna discuss why those are ranges. Uh, it is based off of the cap rate in the property, which I think you guys will find well, is very, very conservative, and we're very excited about that. Again, this property is 144 units. The average in-place rent is $1,049, okay? The coolest part about this property is that it's 100% townhomes, and the average square footage is 1,061 square feet. Those are very, very large units, okay? Uh, it, this property was built in 1971, and we will be getting brand new roofs at closing. Uh, this helps a lot with our CapEx budget. Uh, the current seller has agreed to put on brand new roofs by the time we close. There are 22 buildings and one leasing office, and this property is very close to some very, very cool and brand new uh, elementary, middle, and high schools. And these, like I was saying before, these, all of these units are townhouse style units, and some of these floor plans are really, really cool. The one bedrooms you can see there, if you zoom in a little bit, uh, they are, they do have a little bit of a balcony. Uh, they, they are a loft style apartment, so they are over under. Uh, the two beds are also a very cool floor plan, and my favorite is actually the three bed floor plans where it's actually three floors, which is very, very unique for this area allowing us to achieve a, a pretty good premium on these units. We do plan on targeting families for this property. And some of the amenities that families look for is a pool, a uh, brand new playground, which will be put in, uh, as well as high level property management. Uh, this, is, this property is, again, very close to a lot of schools and it is also right off of a bus line. Uh, for, for public transportation. I am now going to pass it back on to Lee. 
So this property has so many amazing features to it. Of course, the thing that you'll hear continually throughout the evening is townhouses, townhouses, townhouses. Buying townhouses uh, means that we are going to be able to attract full families into our properties and allow they generally stay for a longer period of time than your normal everyday resident. And they'll, as opposed to having an over under where you hear somebody walking above you or below you, uh, you don't have to worry about that in these particular floor plans. Tons of green space on this property. You'll notice in this main top photo, you'll see we have a beautiful sparkling pool that was just updated by the seller. Uh, you can't see the playground, but we're going to be putting in a brand new, beautiful playground at the property because who are we targeting? We're targeting families with children. And what do you see that's negative about this property? The old roofs. As Colby mentioned, the sellers agreed to replace every single shingle on every single one of these roofs before we close on this property. So these roofs will look and be brand new 25 year roofs the day we close on this property, which is going to be absolutely amazing. The interiors of these units are in actually very, very good condition for their age. Uh, they have been well cared for by the previous owners, having replaced windows and doors and the majority of the HVAC systems. All of the wiring is made out of copper. Or all the water supplies are made out of copper. This doesn't feel like a 70s property. This feels like a much newer property, and it will be even newer feeling once we've gotten into them and executed our value-add business model throughout the property. Check out what we're going to do to this thing. Boom. That's what we're going to do to this property. We're going to bring it into the 21st century. We're going to go and paint the entire exterior of the property after the seller replaces the roofs. We're going to update the color scheme. The first reaction I had when I saw this property was, oh, my God, I hate that orange. Right, orange it, doors. <laughs> it is not attractive, in my personal opinion. Whoever chose that color, uh, that I don't know why. Uh, and I'm not really a fan of the beige stucco either. So we're going to be painting the entire exterior of the property. We're also going to be painting all of the doors. We're also going to be doing a new parking lot on the entire property, not just a seal stripe, but we're going to do new pavement in the majority of the, of the complex, new railings. Uh, we're going to bring in a professional third party institutional management company that's going to help us bring this property, not only in a condition standpoint, but a service standpoint to the B class level that a next level tenant expects when they pay market rate rents. We're going to be doing the interiors and the exteriors as well. Let's check out what we're going to do to those. So first of all, you'll notice that the outsides are not very private on these townhomes. We have other projects that we've done this uh, with before in the past and have had huge, wonderful results and experiences from our tenants by providing them with private areas of their own to enjoy. We're going to be fencing in 40% of the apartments that have the least amount of privacy and then offering dividers in between the units, 60% uh, of the units that have a decent amount of privacy, but they still need some privacy from their neighbors on either side. We're gonna be doing all new kitchens. And not just doors this time, which we've done before in the past. This time, we're doing all new cabinets in the kitchens, all new countertops, new gooseneck faucets, all new stainless appliances, microwaves over the ranges. It's going to look just like what you see here, all new bathroom vanities and bringing the interior of these units up to the B-class level that the tenant base in East Point, Georgia expect. All right, let's talk about numbers. So we're acquiring the property of $14,875,000. We're placing a little over $11 million in debt on the property. We ourselves are providing over a million dollars of our own capital into this project. And we're sourcing on just under $6 million of outside capital uh, for this project, a total of $18,350,000. What are we going to do with that money? We're going to be buying the property. We have closing costs and fees involved with closing the transaction. And then we're going to be investing two and a quarter million into the asset by doing all the work that I just described, as well as setting aside a reserve amount of just over a thousand dollars per door in case of a rainy day uh, in order to make sure we have all the capital needed to execute this business, business plan and more so. All right, we're going to talk to Dave about the details of our CapEx budget. 
All right, thanks, Lee. Um, we we assembled this capex budget. We met with uh, subcontractors for like forty day, four days, forty subcontractors, and crawled it, crawled through. I'd like to say every every square inch of the property, but we we covered a lot of ground. Um, Sam Sam will attest to that. He was telling me how tired he was walking back and forth and back and forth. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, we're gonna dress up the interiors, move them from a C close to a B and probably surpassing a B, um, putting in new appliances, countertops, cabinets, kitchen bath faucets, interior paint, um, just just really going through the interiors and making them look like the the upgraded units you saw. And then on the exterior, we're going to do a new sign package. We've got gutters and soffits we're going to be dealing with and doing, doing new gutters and soffits, drainage. Um, one of the big ones is parking lot repairs. We're going to dress up the parking lot and um, restripe it. So it'll be quite quite the look, nice looking project when we get done. New playground um, equipment and uh, existing playground. Um, upgrading the pool furniture, the pool signage, everything that right, right around the pool area. And then like Lee said, the patio dividers and fences. So I'm excited to get started with this one. I'll be working with Joe hand in hand and going through the budget and making sure we can make this happen. All right, Sam. Sorry, one question on that uh, number of units says 87 and uh, Ali said 144. So are we not upgrading some of them? Correct. We are only doing just over half of the units. Uh, the seller has improved several of them that we don't feel like we have to go to that next level. We have budgeted for interior updates to those classic units, but we are not going to take them all the way to the next level with new cabinets and stainless appliances, and thereby also leaving some meat on the bone for the next buyer. Right. Okay. All right, everyone. I'm super stoked on these rent comps. Um, during due diligence, I spent the better part of two days driving around, checking out more than 10 other apartment communities. And I have to say, I'm even more happy about our conservative projections. Stone Tree right here is the closest community within 100 feet of our complex. And they are currently getting $13.35 for their two bedroom, one and a half bath townhomes. Our current average rent for our two bedroom townhome is $10.68 a month. So just by bringing this to a classic level, we're gonna be able to achieve 1275 a month, raising it by almost more than 200 bucks a month. So for the renovated units, we're conservatively projecting 1350 a month. And that's only $15 more than what they're currently getting. As you can see in the photos, they don't have any upgraded lighting, no updated flooring, no cabinetry, toilets are outdated, um, and their appliances are outdated. You know, our units are going to be in way better condition. More than half of our CapEx is going to go towards renovating the, the interiors of the units. So back in March of 2022, Stone Tree Apartments sold for $126,000 a door. We're buying at $103,000 per door, $23,000 less, which is a huge advantage. Uh, another community that's about a quarter mile down the way is getting $15.15 per month for their two bedroom. And they're doing the exact same renovation that we're planning for. So as you can see on the graphs right here, we're also going to be able to bring our one beds and our three beds up as well. But because the property that we're acquiring is majority two beds, we're going to be doing most of our focus on the renovation of the two bedrooms, which is really where the money lies. And back to Megan. Thanks, Samuel. Uh, I just wanted to pause here for a moment and see if we have any questions. I'm not seeing any new ones in the chat box at the moment. Um, hey, so I'm Megan, guessing, yeah. We actually have a question uh, that was sent to us by Chad Ritter. Okay. Uh, he said, are you looking to refinance prior to the five years to pay off some, some percentage of the investor debt? Um, I can answer that question. And the first answer is no. I generally find that refinancing early is an expensive endeavor that you can't actually predict, especially in today's interest rate environment. And something that is not, it is something we've done, but only in longer term deals where we would do a refinance in order to return equity. 
the returns really don't increase for the investor when you do that. It does return capital for them to reinvest earlier. But this project, we project for a five-year hold period, only five years. And we don't believe that the cost benefit uh, is in the investor's favor to refinance and, and spend the cost of refinancing uh, the property in the middle of the business plan for this particular one. So um, yeah, everybody, every deal has its own, you know, way of making it work the right way. And we found that this one didn't really, didn't need one, even though we probably could, but it's kind of expensive. Right. And the debt we're putting on this property is low interest fixed debt. So we don't have to refinance, you know, our business plan allows for mm -hmm. us to have really good debt on the property for the whole period. You know, many times in uh, investment groups will choose to do that in order to remove bridge debt and not only pay back investors, but pay down CapEx funds that they've borrowed, uh, which can be a little bit risky. And we chose, as opposed to borrowing and leveraging the property even higher for our CapEx, we're raising our full CapEx budget uh, from our investors and returning it through returns to them. Yeah, that, that is, I'll just chime in real quick. That's a big deal because as you lower your, the whole risk in multifamily is over leveraging. So as you deleverage, which is what we're hoping to do based on the way this is structured, then, uh, then yeah, it, it makes it a safer deal. So. Mm -hmm. um, is agency debt? There's another question, Lee, yes. from Cameron. What is the timeline to implement the business plan? Yep. So the, we believe that we'll be able to execute the value add business plan within a 24 month period, upgrading all 87 interior apartments and the majority of our classic units will probably be turned over during those first 24 months as well. Uh, and all of the exterior updates will be uh, will occur during that 24 month period. The last thing that we'll do uh, during that 24 month period is the parking lots because we're going to have a lot of big trucks coming and going in and out of the property. They're going to be damaging the already damaged parking lot. So we'll, the last thing we'll do right around two years after close is come in and put an all new parking lot throughout the entire property. Wonderful. We have a few more questions that are coming in, but I think that we'll wait until our next break to answer them because a lot of them have to do with our five-year projected profit and loss, our financing, which is all about to be answered in the next few slides. But for the people that are ready to invest, we are here with the QR code again. You can scan it and get set up for that. Um, and in the meantime, we'll continue on. I'm gonna pass this over to Joe so that he can tell us a little bit about the local market. Thanks, Megan. Uh, now for the good part. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, as you can see here on the map, um, Atlanta, Georgia has been growing consistently since the 1996 Olympics. With that being said, the city of East Point has been one of the fastest growing cities within the Atlanta market. You can see right here, our property, the Phoenix Place, is strategically located in Atlanta to where you can access downtown Atlanta within 20 to 30 minutes. You can access the airport within 15 to 20 minutes. Um, you have a business center, a uh, marketplace. Uh, there's also a lot of other major corporations that are headquartered in the area. And one of the biggest projects currently going on, which is less than a mile away from our property, is the Six West property which is a $1.5 billion mixed use project. Now this project is massive and guaranteed to be a huge, have a huge economic impact, not only on East Point as a city, but the whole entire Atlanta, Georgia as a whole. Next slide, please. Uh, as we come out to more of a 30,000 foot view, the um, Metro Atlanta area, um, as you can see, population steady growing, well over 6 million. Um, the job growth is a consistent 22.8, low unemployment. And one of the things that a lot of people don't recognize or know is that Atlanta also houses Hartsfield-Jackson Airport, which is the busiest airport in the country. And I can definitely attest to that. <laughs> I've been in that hustle and bustle one too many, you know, a number of times. 
Uh, another thing uh, that's important to know about Atlanta, Georgia as a whole is Atlanta is ranked number three in the number of Fortune 500 companies that have chose to house their uh, headquarters. And a big reason for that is you've had a lot of businesses that have relocated from the East Coast and the West Coast that are looking to reduce overhead, but at the same time still have that big sell, big city feel and the big city benefits. Next slide. Here you'll notice uh, a lot of brands that I'm sure we're all familiar with, Walmart, GE, Kroger's. Um, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Chick-fil-A, UPS, all of these companies are based in Atlanta, Georgia. A lot of them have their headquarters here. But one of the biggest projects that we're very excited about that's, you know, not not on not 15 minutes from our, our property is the Aerotropolis Center, which is a one hundred billion dollar complex that houses Ford, Porsche, and Delta Airlines. Now when you have companies of this magnitude that have chose to make it a city their home, that says a lot about that market. And that's part of the reason why a lot of individuals have chose to make Atlanta, Georgia their homes. And another re big reason why we're excited about the Phoenix Place opportunity with it being centrally located in the Atlanta, Georgia area. At this time, I'm going to pass it to Morgan to talk a little bit about why we're all here today, the actual investment. That's right. The exciting information, right? We've already heard about the property, the market, the business plan. Let's talk about the dollars and cents here. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a real brief summary right now, what we're looking at on the investor side. And then I'm going to come back later with a little bit more detail. We're going to go through some projections and some charts so we can see exactly what's going to happen to the money that you invest. Um, we've already talked about this. $14,875,000 is our total purchase. We've already secured the loan for the property, so we're raising $7.4 million to fund this purchase along with our CapEx budget. Uh, we've already committed as general partners over $1.3 million just amongst us, so there's a little over $6 million left for investors as an opportunity. Minimum investment, $50,000 per investor. Again, that's something that you can team up with somebody um, to you know, work as partners and increase your investment together. This is for accredited investors only. Again, if there's questions on that, throw it in the chat. We'll talk about that some more at the end. 8% um, preferred return. The preferred part is really important to see whenever you're investing. What that means is you as a limited partner, as a passive investor, you get paid first before anybody else gets paid. And that's something really important to remember. Those are gonna be uh, quarterly distributions. They do not start immediately. We're going to be starting those distributions once we've taken ownership. Uh, it'll be after the first, or the second quarter after we take ownership of the property. So that's when that'll start. And we're going to go through some details of that to answer any of your questions in just a little bit. Um, also, some of the things to remember in there, we're gonna, you're going to hear cash on cash. You're going to hear cash flow. All these terms are kind of the same. So we're going to see some of that later. I don't want you to get confused. The biggest return comes at the end of the five-year projected hold. When we sell, we're projecting 21 to 25% ARR. So this is going to be your annual return on your investment. Um, put together here, 21 to 25% is a great return. So we're going to be showing some of the details of what that looks like as well. And then uh, the projected equity multiplier, 205 to 225. So again, every dollar that you spend, if they're a, that you invest, expect to receive between two dollars and five back to two dollars and twenty-five cents back on that one dollar investment. So um, we're going to go through all those details in just a bit. I'm going to pass it on back to Lee right now and let him go through some more of the projections here on the business plan. All right. So we have taken an extremely detailed and conservative approach to our business model for this asset. Uh, as we spoke about earlier, you have a combined team of over $350 million in assets. Uh, so we approach all of our underwriting and business, business uh, assumptions and the assumptions on this property in a very conservative manner. Uh, the current uh, Average population growth is over 2%, and we've only projected an increase of 3%, which is below inflation across the border in Atlanta drastically. The expenses are 
much higher than what a normal uh, investment group would probably project. We have assumed the taxes from last year to this year to double. Uh, so we are going to, and which is a much, much lower uh, or higher assumption than what we would normally uh, assume with another project. We have over $200,000 in payroll assumed for this property. We are going to hire and have the most high quality employees on site at this asset. So at the end of the day, after all of our expenses, we believe we'll have a net operating income in the first year of $1.163 million before debt service. And then we will have to pay our mortgage, which is assumed to be at 6.25 interest fixed for the entire hold period of five years on the asset. That carry with, carries with it a 36 month period of interest only. So that's why the principal is only zero and we can maximize the distributable cash to our investors. Distributable cash is the number you'll see at the bottom. That's the number that we distribute on a quarterly basis to our investors. So in the first year, you'll notice we're at $4.475,000 in distributable cash flow. In year three, that cash flow based upon $7,400,000 is over 10%. So the cash flow distributions expected in, or presumed in year four after conservative budgeting is to be over 10% of your invested dollar. In year five, once we reach a one point, just under $1.6 million net operating income and distribute over $770,000 in cash flows to our investors, we'll put the property to market and we will sell the property, yielding a payday for our investors at the end of the five year old period. The pro forma assumptions in the spreadsheet are put to words here for detailed descriptions. These are very conservative assumptions for this particular asset. Um, you know, we have replacement reserves at $250,000 per year per unit. And um, that's extra money set aside. And, you know, it is there for the property to continue to offset deferred maintenance and major CapEx projects. Um, our insurance is budgeted for over $500 per unit per year, which is a conservative number. We believe we can beat that, uh, but, you know, especially with brand new roofs, but we'll see at the end of the day. We don't want to over project and under deliver. Um, at the end of the day, other things that you want to take, pay attention to are our expected vacancy rate. The market vacancy rate in Atlanta is roughly 5%, and we have projected a 7% vacancy uh, during the first year of ownership. All right, on back to Morgan. Uh, once again, anybody who's ready to invest, there you go with your QR code on the left. You can click that and go through the process. Otherwise, we're going to continue moving forward and get back to some more exciting investor information here. Um, so we have a couple of pages in the offering memorandum here that are nearly identical to one another with one slight difference. So if you look at the investor projections, uh, the first page that we're going to see, let's, uh, can we catch up the slides here, guys? There we go. So first page here, this one's based on a six and a half cap exit. The second page is going to be a six cap exit. We'll go ahead and take a look at that. So one of the important things to look at, people ask me all the time talking about cap rates. What do you buy at? What do you sell at? I mean, they're, they could be all over the board, but here's something that's that's really solid to see. The average cap rate in the Atlanta market right now is just over 5%, 5.06%. We're going extremely conservative with everything we do. So uh, when we're looking at the projections in five years when we sell, we're projecting either a six cap or a six and a half cap. We want to be safe. We always want to be in a position of uh, under promising and over delivering. So these projections are going to give you a very simple breakdown of what it looks like for a $100,000 investment. If you are going to invest a different amount, it's easy to do math based on this. So if we look at the chart here, we have year one through five. The first two lines are the cash flow and cash on cash. Like I said earlier, they're talking about essentially the same thing. OK, so it's cash on cash or percentage there. We're talking about a preferred eight percent in year one. We don't start those distributions. The quarterly distributions start after the second quarter of ownership. So there's going to be slightly less in year one, and it catches up pretty quickly. Year two, you'll see over 8.6%, year three, over 10%, and so on and so forth. So easy to follow that along. The 
big part of the return for our investors is, of course, based on the equity. It's all that forced appreciation and the forced equity that we put in the property while executing our business plan. That's what really this is all about. And this is an amazing team to do that. So we're looking at basically any uh, an investment of $100,000 you're gonna get a return of almost 225,000 at the end. And I absolutely love to see those numbers. My favorite part beyond the actual return on your investment is something that a lot of people don't even think about when they're looking into investments, but it's so important. It's your tax benefits. I'm gonna pass this over to Charlie. I'm gonna let him go over some a brief summary. Uh, this guy is an absolute expert when it comes to tax benefits and uh, Charlie, take it away. Yeah, it's so funny. Uh, somebody just dropped a question in the chat asking if we were going to do a cost segregation study. And uh, yes, is the answer to that question. We are uh, we are doing a cost seg study. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with that, it's a little bit of an advanced uh, technique that we use. Uh, if you've invested in one of our deals before, you've probably already seen what we're talking about. Um, but basically, a cost segregation study takes what you're purchasing. If you buy a rental house, uh, you can depreciate that rental house over 27.5 years. Uh, cost segregation literally segregates out what you're paying. And so instead of buying an apartment complex, we're buying an apartment complex plus 144 water heaters, 144 refrigerators, 144 air conditioning units, all of which have five-year um, depreciation timelines. So they break all this up and you literally run it on separate schedules. That's how it works. And so... Um, this little thing is one of the great things about real estate investing and the, the long and short of it is I'm always hesitant to give exact numbers but if you invest $100,000 in this deal uh, you're going to receive a negative K1 uh, your first year that should be between 40 to 60 percent of that investment amount so you should show a paper loss of 40 to $60,000 uh, in your first year Big deal, you know, if you buy stock in uh, Coca-Cola is based there uh, in in Atlanta. And if you bought stock in Coke, um, you would not receive a negative K-1 until you sold it for a loss. Here you're getting a loss without actually um, without actually having a loss. So should be a great thing. All right. I think I'm up next, Charlie. Thank you. Yes. All right, so you've seen the QR codes a couple of times, and I think Megan's posted the um, the investment portal on the chat. I think she'll do that again before it's over. So if you are ready to invest, this is the process uh, of uh, the investment process. Either uh, click on the, um, take a picture of the QR code, or go at the chat and uh, look for Megan's um, uh, link, and it'll get you to the investment portal called Cashflow Portal. And uh, you create an account, and then you sign in. And once you sign in, review the documents. Once you review the documents, answer the questions, and then e-sign. Once you e-sign, you go ahead and make a commitment um, in the cash flow portal of what you're planning on putting in 50,000, 100,000, a million. Um, and then it will be sent, it'll be sent back to the uh, GP team. They will review it um, for compliance. Once it's uh, reviewed for compliance, then they will send it back to you with wiring instructions. And this is very important, folks. You need to fund the deal as soon as you have the wiring for, uh, instructions. Uh, due to the fact that the $6 million that we're raising, it, it, it sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. It will go fast. So the first uh, limited partners that fund the deal are, are in place. So even though you've signed a lot of times it, it, you may miss out. So you need to fund the deal as soon as possible. Um, and then our planning on close is sometime uh, early to mid-October uh, on, uh, on escrow. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, this is uh, something I've always uh, come up with and we have uh, frequently asked questions. Some of these questions have already been answered uh, during the process of the webinar. What is the timeline for the investment? We're, we're set to close in October. Uh, so the shares are investment typically go quickly. So you really need to wire ASAP, folks. That's really important. Uh, how will the profits be distributed? Well, Morgan already uh, stated this uh, on the 8% preferred return. And the profit split is 70-30, 70% for the limited partnership and 30% for the GPs. And the distributions, again, will begin after the second quarter of ownership. 
And folks, this is really important. I, I've been involved in a lot of uh, limited partnerships and you don't get a lot of distributions. I think this is really important that we are planning on distributing after the second quarter of ownership. How much of the general partners are contributing to the deal? Well, I'm, I'm telling you this, every general partner on this deal is contributing you know, money. We've got, all got skin in the game. And right now we, we're up to about 1.3 million of GP investing. And that's our own cash and, and, uh, and funds we're investing. So that's really important. We do have skin in the game in order to move forward. What are the investor requirements to invest in this deal? Only accredited investors can invest in this opportunity. Um, as Morgan stated earlier, uh, you have to be an accredited investor. Um, you can go to the website uh, and, and or go online and look up what it takes to be an accredited investor. But um, the the requirements are are, are are something that we hold we hold to. Uh, what's the minimum amount I can invest? Fifty thousand dollars, which I think is pretty good. It's very uh, very reasonable. Um, I've been on deals where they require a minimum of a hundred thousand. In this particular um, uh, syndication, we're only asking 50 as a minimum. Now you can go in with maybe another partner and you can invest 25 and your other partner can be 25. As long as you're accredited, you can go in as a limited partnership to invest the 50,000. Can I invest money from my IRA? Good question. Yes, you can self-direct your IRA monies into this deal. And uh, you have to set up a, a, a self-directed IRA and both Morgan and Megan can direct you to that. Um, they have a company that you can transfer your 401k and or your IRA that's at your local bank and transfer it into a self-directed IRA account. And it, it's very simple and it'll go quick and then they can transfer that into this fund. Is due diligence complete? Oh my gosh. We talked about due diligence. Dave mentioned earlier how we walked every unit, every room, every apartment building, uh, I, my my feet were just killing me. I've, I've never done that as old as I am. And I'm telling you, the guys uh, that were doing the due diligence uh, did a great job. They were very detailed. And I can tell you, this team was very detailed on going through each and every unit, looking at the laundry rooms, uh, the areas, the uh, common commonplace areas. And I can tell you this. And, and plus, on top of that, too, Lee had um, our property management, our proposed property management company out there. Uh, and Dave had... Um, as he said, 40 subcontractors show up. So our CapEx budget is pretty tight right now, and we know where we're going. Back to you, Charlie. Yes, sir. So there it is. Uh, you guys have heard, you know, what we love about the uh, the opportunity here. We're hoping maybe you've caught the vision as, uh, as we talked about this for not only what the property is, but for what we believe it's going to be. Um, uh, people ask me, uh, how, how do you know if a deal is a good deal? And so one of the things, really the only thing we do, we look for properties that check boxes, okay? How, how do you add value? Is this an, an opportunity to add value? We think there's clearly an opportunity to, uh, to add value to this property. Um, Coca-Cola, again, I mentioned earlier, but it's based in Atlanta. If, if you buy $100,000 Coca-Cola stock, you need to understand there is nothing you can do to increase the value of that investment, right? With a broken down, and it's not that broken down, but with an older complex that's probably not the nicest property in a neighborhood, there are literally 300 things you can do to that complex. And we have a very detailed, systemized plan in place uh, of what we're gonna do to that complex to, to bring it up to par with the neighborhood and, uh, and make it still be a success. So uh, we've mentioned it a couple of times, we are putting our own money into the deal. That is something you always wanna look for if you're ever investing uh, in something like this. It's super important that sponsors have skin in the game. So um, yeah, make sure you do that. We definitely check that box. Um, uh, after this is over, you guys are gonna hear from the person that invited you. Again, if you have questions, please feel free to ask those questions. Uh, stick around after this is over. We'll run through some uh, some of some of the additional Q and A questions which are in the chat. Uh, that QR code is there, so if you haven't done it already, please go ahead and click the QR code. It'll take you to uh, to the investment portal where you can begin to invest. Uh, this is absolutely going to fill up. Um, so, yeah, we feel like it's an unbelievable opportunity. I'm going to close just by touching on 
the team. These are these are the people. This is my fifth deal with Lee Fjord. He's been excellent to work with. Uh, his wife, Megan, is one of the most detail-oriented people I've ever seen. Uh, we have two. You're looking at two GPs right now. One of which, Dave Carlson has built apartment complexes for the last 30 years. There's nobody better to oversee a CapEx budget than Dave. Joe has actively flipped dozens and dozens and dozens of homes in the Atlanta area. He's a former NFL football player. He'll give you an autograph if you invest. And uh, <laughs> But he is, he is so well-connected there. All these little things are just so important. So uh, we feel like it's a winning team uh, as much as it is a winning opportunity. Hope you guys will join us, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, so I'm going to open it up to questions now, and I'm scrolling back through the chat history to the uh, the first question. We've already answered a couple of them, but Lee, I'm going to pose this one to you. Can you better explain the financing terms, how you're hedging against the current risks of the interest rate environment? And we've had that sort of similar question several times in the chat box. So tell us again about our financing. So we're going back to Old Faithful agency debt. We, I personally, have never done a floating rate loan ever. Not once ever. Never done bridge ever once. And we're just using a everyday Fannie Mae large balance loan on the asset. Uh, the loan is going to be right at 11.2 million. Uh, it is 6.25% uh, fixed with 36 months of I.O., uh, it'll be serviced by one of the largest uh, agency debt servicers in the nation, Arbor. And uh, they went through the property and have done a detailed due diligence of their own on the financial condition of the asset, had it appraised, and um, it went swimmingly. Uh, so we are, um, yeah, we're old faithful, fixed rate debt for the entire whole period of five years. Nothing like just regular, nothing crazy, no borrowing our CapEx money, no floating rate debt, no, you know, rate caps, none of that. Just regular old agency debt. And I mean, agency debt three years ago was this same loan was three and a half uh, and it's six and a quarter today. Uh, so, and it's fixed the entire time. Nothing they can do to take it away from us. Perfect. Um, okay, Lee, I have another question for you. What's the deal story? Why is the seller selling? Hmm. Yeah, this is a very important aspect. As a former broker, you want to know why is the seller selling? So this seller is an institutional fund operator who the primary portion of his business is retail operations. He owns strip centers and single tenant net lease around the country. A small portion of his portfolio is multifamily. He sees a great opportunity in the retail industry today, and he is recapitalizing his fund and acquire and disposing of multifamily assets in order to acquire retail. And I love I'm not I'm kind of a in the opposite mindset. I don't really like retail, even though I've sold retail as a broker before. I prefer a more stable asset that everyone will always have to have and can't be uh you know, sucked up by Amazon or reduce the value based upon the Amazon effect on retail. So I love hat providing, you know, wonderful blue collar housing to families. And that's what this is. Perfect. Um, and his loan is up. <laughs> that's always a great answer as yeah. well. Um, okay. So this one is a really great question. And I feel like all of us could answer in our own way. East Point was an extremely rough area for a period of time. Can you speak to the crime rate in this area? I can take Anybody this want to take it? Yeah, I got this one. Okay. Um, so this obviously was an initial concern for us when we first started looking at this property. Uh, and I spent, I can't tell you how many hours uh, looking online, trying to do the best due diligence that I possibly could about East Point. And initially, I will be 100% honest with you, it was scaring me at first uh, until I started finding the little granular things that made East Point East Point and all of the amazing things that are starting to happen to this community. Uh, obviously, I could only do so much uh, from my home office here. 
it really started to change as soon as we got into East Point. So here's what I'm going to tell you. If you guys get the chance and you were looking at a map of where this property is, uh, the two cross sections that you want to pay attention to is going to be Washington Road and Stone Road. Okay. Anything no north of Stone Road is going to be slightly rougher, but anything south of Stone Road, you're going to see a huge path of progress. This property is literally on the front line of the passive path of progress. Okay. Anything east of Washington Road, you're going to walk into neighborhoods and you're going to see couples walking their golden retriever down the street. You're going to see five, six, seven hundred thousand dollar houses. I mean, this is really in the, the immediate area of the path of progress, not to mention the one point five billion dollar complex that is being put in just south of the property. Like, I'm not kidding. It is one point one miles away from the property. They've already started con construction. The first phase is set to be good be finished in 2025. Uh, the other really cool thing is the, we, we briefly talked about Aerotropolis. Aerotropolis is not just a place. Aerotropolis is actually an organization that comes into the surrounding areas of airports or yes, the areas that are surrounding airports uh, and they're there to develop those areas. Hartfield Jackson International Airport is Atlanta's greatest asset, and the people in Atlanta are starting to realize how valuable that asset is, and they're starting to dump money into the, the surrounding areas. So you're starting, starting to see a lot of areas right around the airport up and coming. Uh, the other part of East Point, Jefferson Park, uh, I watched videos upon videos of that area get completely redeveloped. And you're starting to now see it into uh, this section of East Point. So, yes, uh, there are some concerns and there were prior more concerns about the crime in the area. Uh, but there are a lot of development that is coming into the area. I have noticed uh, there was actually an article that I read that the police department has brought on quite a few more police officers to help mitigate the crime. Uh, and there will be on-site security as well as uh, the police department will be contracted to monitor the property. So, yeah, the good news is that most of the crime in this area is actually at our complex. So we're going to hopefully be able to mitigate that. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that is good news, believe it or not. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Uh, yeah. I want to jump in really quick, too, just to expand on that. So we heard all that great news. But when you're actually driving through the area and i guess without going there the best thing to do is if you jumped on google maps and go to your street view we all did that individually we did that as a team and we had all heard the same stigmas about crime rate and about the area being a little bit rough potentially i can speak i think for the entire team because we talked about this uh, time and time again while we were there through the inspections and due diligence the neighborhoods surrounding this property are gorgeous I don't have any other way to say it. And again, I come from a, a residential real estate background. So I'm going to speak through those eyes. We are buying the ugly duckling, the duckling in the neighborhood. And that's perfect because there's so much room for value add potential, which is exactly what we do. That's how we make our money on these properties. But the neighborhoods, the residential neighborhood, they're all very well kept. There isn't a driving through those neighborhoods. It's hard to find a house that doesn't have their lawn pristine. Everything is green. The houses are all painted and up kept well. Lots of pride of ownership. The schools, when you go to the three local schools, the elementary, the middle, and the high school, I was blown away. These are stunning brick buildings, just beautiful facades, beautiful grounds. They're massive in size. Um, it, this really checks all those boxes of an area that you want to be in. And we didn't get any sense of you know, danger or rough or anything there in the surrounding neighborhoods. It's really, really nice. The gentrification that's been going on in this area has been exploding and is only going to continue uh, increasing in the surrounding areas with all that new development going on. So we are part of that now. And I, I think the last thing that I want to say is that Lee and I always talk about looking at properties and being able to see uh, how cheap somebody bought a property in this really great area, you know, five years ago. And I feel like this is that opportunity to be able to be like, wow, we were the smart guys that came in and bought this property when it was a little rough. And now five years from now, it's completely developed. I want somebody else to look at us and go, wow, those guys were really smart. They knew what they were doing. Yeah. I have no doubt in my mind that's happening. It, 
this this is going to be an incredible opportunity and it's in the right place for sure when i got started in real estate the the thing you always look for well there's two things you want to focus on where the path of progress is and look for dumpsters that's what I always look for it here in St. Louis when I got started. When I was buying my first duplex, I bought it in a neighborhood where every fourth duplex in the neighborhood had dumpsters there at the property. What did that mean? There was other people dumping money into their assets. And I can tell you that we toured dozens driving by and actually looking at comps of other apartment complexes in the area. And you know what I saw? Dumpsters. I saw buildings getting completely repainted. I saw buildings getting complete new roofs, all new doors, other people in the neighborhood besides us that have already done this to their properties and they're now our comps. And our neighbor 18 months ago bought their property for $23,000 more than what we're buying this property. Her door. door. Her door. Her door. They're buying it for what we are investing into it after all of our costs and expenses and everything. And they haven't even done anything to their units. They have glue up shower walls, but the neighbor next to them completely updated new, you know, new everything. And it's beautiful. You just want to be part of the flow of money. And then one mile to the South and that $1.6 million development, you know, what's going there. Porsche North America world headquarters. They don't put the Porsche headquarters in a neighborhood and not put additional money into the community and police. That's the path of progress. That's how you find it. And that's why we bought or why we're buying this asset. I just, that was a good question. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, that was a really good question. And and I want to preface this. I know it sounds like we're being raw, raw, raw. And like this area is so great and this area is up and coming and all the good things that are happening, but it's, it's because it's the truth. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you and say that if you turn down the wrong street that, you know, it might be a little rougher than other parts, but that's any city in America. It It is the truth when we're saying that there are houses a quarter of a mile away that are that are five hundred thousand, six hundred thousand dollar houses. So we actually saw a brand new construction house that's listed for a uh, million dollars. And as the. Megan was unable to go with us to uh, due diligence. So I was only the only female on the team there. And I was pleasantly surprised with the neighborhood. Didn't have any concerns whatsoever with safety or crime or anything like that. It's it's really amazing. Um, so I'm going to move on to our next question. This one is regarding sort of investor relations. Um, what is the communication policy or frequency um, and uh, about the distributions also? Is it monthly, quarterly, ACH uh, or checks, wire transfers? How does that work? Uh, I can cover that. So our distributions are going to begin after six months of ownership, two quarters. The PREF does accrue during the entire whole period. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we will distribute two quarters worth of returns or cash flows to our investors. So that happens quarterly. Ideally, it happens through ACH. We recommend that when you create your account in the cash flow portal, that you connect your bank account to that. And that way we can automatically send you those distributions every quarter. We do monthly investor updates. Every single month, we send out to our investors a newsletter that details out the current financial condition of the property, as well as an update on unit turns. And we bring you into the fold and the understanding of what's going on at the property, providing pictures and detailed information about not only the updates to the CapEx projects, but introduce you to the on-site management staff, keep you updated when we do on-site property visits, and so on and so forth every month. Thank you. Uh, this one's a quick and easy one. How do you verify accredited status? There's... I can talk to that if you want. Um, so when we're in the when you're in the cash flow portal starting the investment process, you have two different options. One is to have a, a letter that is in PDF format in the system. Uh, signed by a CPA or um, an SEC licensed person 
stating that you do make the uh, the two hundred thousand dollars a year for the last two years, uh, or if you're a married couple, the three hundred thousand for the last two years, or that you have a minimum net worth of a million dollars, not including your primary residence. So that's the really easy version if you want, and if your CPA mm -hmm. is willing to do that. The other option is directly in the portal. There is a third party verification uh, company that I believe it's $60. You pay them, you give them some information, upload it. And within a short period of time, they send us verification. So two easy ways. Uh, our next question, Lee, you, Lee and Megan probably can answer this one best regarding insurance. One, have we received any quotes yet? And uh, what about like year over year increases and that sort of thing? Right. So uh, great question. So we have received one quote in hand from State Farm. Uh, the great thing about State Farm is we have multiple properties insured with them. Uh, so we get, you know, good competitive rates with them. Uh, additionally, uh, one of our properties that we uh, acquired last November, we are up on renewal right now and State Farm did not increase our rates. So of course we're prepared, you know, our conservative underwriting has space for that if if needed um, with inflation year over year. But we do have a, um, we do have a quote in hand that meets our numbers. And additionally, just so we can make sure we get the best bang for the buck, we do have an insurance broker that's currently shopping around to see if we can beat that as well. Yeah, we assumed a 3% average uh, annual increase. So three on top of three on top of three on top of three every year escalating the increase of insurance uh, during the whole period. Um, and we did incorporate a budget over and above what our current insurance quote is in hand. And the new okay. roofs don't help or don't hurt. No, the yeah, brand the, new roofs don't hurt when you're getting, uh, getting insurance quotes. Yes, the copper wiring and the brand new roofs are one of the best reasons why uh, our quotes are so good. Yeah. Okay, we have a couple of questions kind of going back to the financing terms. How do you know you'll be able to sell it after five years for the price you're planning on? And is the sell date firm at five years or are you willing to hold longer if the market is declining? So the answer is, how do we know we're going to be able to sell? Well, be able to sell, everything's always worth something. But at the end of the day, how our loan is going to be fixed for a five-year period, five-year hold, five-year period. If we were to choose to keep the property, let's say the it's today and it's not the right time to be a seller. Well, we could always re, uh, we can just re-up our loan and add an extra, you know, three or five year period onto it if we were to choose to do so at the end of the day. The best part about buying real estate is that it's always going to be financeable as long as you have a seasoned team and the property is, is functioning and financially viable for debt. It'll always be financeable. So we're going to put five-year debt on the property. We have a fine five-year period when we plan to sell the property. Um, and how do we know we're going to be able to sell? I, multifamily is one of the most in-demand asset classes because it's so easy to understand and it makes a lot of sense. So there will always be a buyer for this property. The current market cap rate in Atlanta is 5%. One thing that we didn't talk about is the conservative exit assumptions. That is probably the most conservative. That's a, and our number of 105% return on your invested capital is based on a six and a half cap rate exit sale. Atlanta is a five cap market in CoStar today, in today's market. It used to be a sub five. It used to be a 4.75 cap rate market this time a year ago when interest rates were, you know, four and a half. And in East Point, which is not the best part of Atlanta, but in my opinion, the best place to that I know of to invest in Atlanta because it's the path of progress is a 5.6 cap rate in CoStar under their submarket category. And we're projecting an exit of six and a half to six. So even our more aggressive exit at 125% return on your money is still based upon a market cap rate above what is today's current market cap rate by 40 basis points. 
mm-hmm. there's a there's a lot of room there to still be able to sell and be successful. Kind of a quick little piggyback on that. Somebody asked if we're able to utilize a VA loan for any part of this to offset high interest rates. Uh, since we do have a former Navy person here, Ken, how about that? So the VA loan uh, is uh, residential only. So unfortunately, we can't use any veteran benefits for that. <laughs> Darn it. All right, Morgan, I'm going to uh, key this up to you. Let me see. Uh, what is the deadline to invest? Well, there's sort of two answers to that. The deadline is we, you know, funding, uh, the deal takes place, the final funding will take place two to three days prior to close. But I don't ever want to recommend that to anybody because I'm certain you'll lose your, your spot. The important thing to remember is going into the investor portal today uh, allows you to sign up, make your commitment in writing and get all your instructions how to move forward with wiring your funds over. Uh, and I highly recommend wiring as soon as possible. I mean, you don't need to do it tomorrow. You can certainly do it tomorrow. You're secured then. But a commitment in the investor portal does not save your place, not until you actually wire your funds. Once you funded, now you are an investor and now you have a placehold in there. So don't delay. I saw some people do that recently on another property that we purchased and they lost out. You know, we'll, we always will raise until the very end, until it's funded. So the sooner the better is the best answer. Perfect. Uh, and this one's a really interesting one. With the current events in the world and what we've seen recently, how do you plan to mitigate potential hardships in terms of tenants not being able to afford the rents with a lower reserve capital base? So I can speak to this again. Um, as a former property manager, the best way to mitigate tenant affordability risk is by approving and only leasing to tenants who qualify over and above the national average income to rent basis, which is approximately one third. Uh, we only rent to tenants who qualify financially, as well as have on a longer period of time of income. We require a minimum of a one year in their current job. We also require a 3.5% income to rent ratio. And, or sorry, it's yeah, three right. and a half times. So mm -hmm. three and a half times the rent in order to qualify. Uh, in addition to that, the tenants have to have a minimum of a 650 credit score. It is a requirement for us to be able to approve any of our tenants in the property. And we utilize this very specific requirement across the board with our tenants. So we make sure to mitigate those risks. Right. And then another way that we mitigate the risk you know, of recessions and things like that. First of all, like multifamily is one of the most recession proof assets, which is one of the reasons why we love investing in it because as people downsize, they start to rent more. But additionally is the location of this asset in a as in a, an MSA with a growing population rate, it's supply and demand. As people move to the area, there's only a fixed amount of apartments available. So, you know, as people, if they can't qualify, whichever, there's more people moving to the area getting those good jobs at Aerotropolis. And that's one of the benefits. That's why we only grow in places where the population is growing. So we can ensure that supply and demand is always there. Love it. Uh, this one, I really like how they've worded this. Um, in every deal, sponsors present only the good stuff. So what are the downsides of this deal and property? And how do you incorporate that into your projections and plans? Hmm. Mm, that's a good question. All right. right? <laughs> so, um, anybody can feel free to jump in here, but my immediate response goes to there. I mentioned earlier, this is my 30th apartment complex. Uh, we generally like to think we know what we're doing, but there is a possibility that we miss something. Um, so, I mean, that is a possibility. Um, Secondly is we don't control the economy. Uh, we have a projection where we double property taxes, but no one on this uh, no one on this zoom call actually controls what the property taxes are going to be. So if they you know if they quadruple or something, uh, you know that would be a, pro a problem. but uh, 
it, the bigger macroeconomic stuff is what I would be worried about. You know, unemployment rate going to 15%, uh, interest rates going to 12%, you know, that uh, would derail this and, and any other deal. Uh, and you know, ultimately, you got to, you know, you can buy a treasury bond and earn whatever, 4% four, 4 or whatever they're paying. That's 100% guaranteed. Um, we're projecting 20% returns, which we think is rock solid, and there's a clear path. Uh, hopefully, we thought of everything that, uh, that's certainly reasonable, and um, and yeah, we we think we'll be able to deliver. Charlie, I think deals have done well. I interpreted the question slightly different, so I'm going to answer it in oh, a okay. totally different fashion. Uh, problems with the property or area that we know about, since uh, the question was, I believe, sort of highlighting all the the beautiful things. Um, we found problems there. There was some, uh, you know, obviously we talked about the roofs, right? When we first put our initial CapEx budget together, we budgeted $700,000 to replace the roofs ourselves. Well, then we ended up negotiating in the deal that we're having the seller uh, replace those roofs before the close of escrow. Huge bonus. We just pocketed $700,000 essentially right there. It changed the dynamic. We came across some issues with uh, some drainage stuff. It was really simple. We're talking about basically deferred maintenance from the current owner that shows, you know, the way that they were operating this property was, in my estimate, poor. And those are the properties you want to buy because that's the best, easiest and fastest value add is a property that's being managed poorly. So they're the gutters on the roofs. They were full of debris with, you know, leaves and pine needles and whatnot. We're going to repair all the gutters, clean all those gutters out when the roofs get done. And we're adding the uh, protectors on the top so they don't get full so we don't have to constantly be cleaning them out then it goes down to the drainers the drains the downspouts the flow of the water really basic stuff but there were some problems with that so we've already solved those problems we've already budgeted for all of that type of stuff and we feel really confident in the numbers that we've put together and uh, i'll say this again and again and again conservative all of our numbers when we're running these numbers and building these budgets we are extremely conservative because we always want to be on the safe side and pad everything. Um, we had, and this was mentioned earlier, but just to reiterate, while we were there for four days worth of inspections, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody else, I think we had, was it 40 contractors scheduled or 60? I can't remember. I think it was 60 people total we had, including our team, our property management team that flew in, and then about 40 contractors multiples for each thing, electricians, plumbers, roofers, painters, uh, the paving companies, uh, scoping all of the, the, uh, the drain systems and the sewer systems, uh, going through every single panel in every single unit, uh, HVAC companies going through every single unit and every forced air unit in there and AC unit as well. I mean, there was no stone left unturned, even pool. We had a couple of pool contractors out, even though the pool was just refinished. So did we find problems along the way? Absolutely. That's what that was about. And now we've built in all the solutions for those. So that way we have a perfect, uh, you know, road ahead of us here. One last thing to add to the, um, so we stress test this property on a financial basis and uh, we are able to reduce the economic occupancy down to below, just below 70% and still be at a break even level. So this property would have to be 30% financially vacant before we were even at a break-even point and not be able to distribute any cash flow, but yet still able to pay all of our debt service and all of our expenses. Um, and I can tell you that an owner-operator who works side-by-side -side with an institutional quality management company, where our business model involves having a full-time on-site live-in property manager who lives at the property. That is how we on our assets after and during these value-add processes have maintained over 95% economic occupancy during the value-add process because they're there 24 hours a day. And when they pick a tenant, they're picking their neighbor. They're picking the person who their children are going to play on our brand new $30,000 playground with. So that's another aspect of our business plan that's a little bit different than a lot of other people. We stress test it to the max, and we have a business plan that involves a few other little key factors that are, in my opinion, better than other operators.
That's truly the perfect segue into the next question that I wanted to bring up. Uh, it's, have you done C-class properties before? Any challenges? And this person has looked at other C-class deals and the existing tenants haven't put down deposits. What about our existing tenants? <laughs> so, yes, there we have done C-class properties before. Multiple. Multiple C-class <laughs> properties. We've and seen it all, folks. <laughs> you learn from it. You build thick skin by knowing the tenant base that you're working with and you learn how to communicate with the tenants when you're working in those environments. Um, you know, it's not an aspect of us versus them. We're on the same team, unless they are obviously adverse to, you know, quality management and living in a decent home, uh, in which case they are disruptive to the community and they are offered the opportunity to leave as soon as humanly possible. And if they choose to not take us up on that opportunity, they are asked to vacate immediately. Um, we do not accept adverse tenants in our properties. Um, income, any other aspect, no matter what, at the end of the day, if you're someone who is disrupted to the community, you're no longer allowed to live here, even if you can afford it. And that's what we focus on. We don't focus on, you know, um, any other reason to remove someone from their home other than the fact that they're disruptive to their neighbors. We've dealt with it. We've gone through the process before. Uh, it's being able to communicate with people appropriately in the right channels, in the right manner. One of the best ways to mitigate collection risk is by putting people on to a specific detailed payment schedule that works for them and is automatically deducted from their bank account on a scheduled basis that's predictable by all people. And we have that in place at all of our assets. So another good thing to mention here too, is that the property management company that we've chosen to run this asset, we've worked with multiple times before. We know through experience that they know what they're doing and managing a C-class property. Um, they have the protocols in place whenever things don't happen as they should, and it's efficient. So you know, having that relationship with the property management company, having the experience with them, we know what we're getting ourselves into. And so do they. Oh, and yes, we did a detailed lease audit of every single lease in uh, that's currently in place of the property, verified every single security deposit, received a bank statement from the seller, verifying that those dollar amounts are being held by the seller and their management company that is okay. They're okay but we're certainly not keeping them. I can tell you that. Uh, there's a reason why they're only 92% occupied. Uh, and it's because their managers are not there and they aren't uh, they aren't up to our quality. They don't use today's up-to-date software and they don't maximize it. And they're under, you know, they are, you know, my opinion, understaffed. And uh, we've budgeted accordingly for all of that as well. So they awesome. have- <laughs> I think I have gotten to all of the questions in the chat box. Uh, if anybody has any more, throw them in now, please. But otherwise, I think we're all done here. Um, and we would love it if you would scan the QR code, check out the investor portal, hopefully commit to your investment. Oh, I just saw one. Is this an opportunity zone? You know, the thing about an opportunity zone, I am I can pull up the map and figure that out and send you an email and let you know very quickly. It's available in CoStar. We have access to it. I did not specifically research that for this particular property because this property wouldn't qualify for any opportunity zone effect. Uh, generally, you have to invest 100% of the purchase price into the asset in order to be able to qualify for the benefits of an opportunity zone. But I won't be surprised if it is an opportunity zone because those are usually to spur development in an area. And I would imagine that East Point is one of those areas that uh, was granted the opportunity zone. That was in what, 2016, 17? It was during Obama's years, right. Right, a little bit earlier. We would have to verify it though. But I can verify an email and let you know. Any other questions? I think one more fun thing to add in for anyone who's a marketing geek too, this is going to be a full rebrand. 
the property of Phoenix Place is the name currently. We are going to be changing the name, the signage, the color palette, everything about it. Why? Uh, the big reason is we are going to completely transform this property. So we want to also transform the look, the branding, the marketing, everything along with the property. So it will be more fitting and it's going to be like a fresh, clean slate. It's, it's going to be night and day difference from what it is today. Yeah, if you want to see an opportunity, go and Google the property. You won't even find a website on their Google search. I mean, it's it's at, they are so outdated, it is unbelievable. I mean, that alone will be a huge transformation of the perception of this property in the community. Rebranding it, launching a brand new up-to-date website that's available on every single search engine. Uh, that's just going to do nothing but bring tenants into our doors and let us be selective of who we choose to live in our community. No more burnt orange doors. No burnt orange doors. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. All right. Looks like we've got, we've, we've hit everybody in the chat box. Any more questions for us? Looks like everybody's getting excited about it though. That's what I love to hear. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you all so much for staying on here with us. We know we're about an hour and a half now, um, but this has really been great, a great Q&A session. Yeah. Can you get a copy of this recording? So I believe in 24 to 48 hours, we should have this recording. We'll be posting it on all, all of our various YouTube channels. Um, so yes, everybody will be able to access this again. I also believe everybody that RSVP'd, their email is in there and it will automatically be sent to them as well. Yes. All right, well, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, please reach out to the person who invited you to the webinar this evening if you have specific questions. Uh, we would love to be able to go over them with you in detail 